Blog Talk Radio. Hello, friends. Good day to you. Today is Wednesday, November 28th, 2018. This is Molly McCord, and thank you for joining me for this Wednesday podcast as we talk about the astrology and energies of right now and in the week ahead. Today, we have some very buoyant, uplifting energies. Uh, the sun is at six degrees of Sagittarius. Jupiter, four degrees of Sagittarius. Mercury at three degrees of Sagittarius. All that Sag energy is working with the collective energy field right now. It's lifting up. Like I get the image of a fishnet that is rising up, and it's actually the matrix energies that are being infused with more potentials, possibility. Um, it's, it's a very opening energy. This is an opening time into different realms, different energies, different feelings, different potentials. All things are being refreshed right now. And I hope you're feeling that in some part of your life or in your energy. This energy will be in your natal chart in those beginning degrees of Sagittarius. Depending when you listen to this show, we'll call it the first 10 degrees of Sagittarius as the sun will voyage forward here and enter um, into the 10 degrees in the next four days. So you're, you're being given an opportunity to rise up, rising up, okay? And this is something that we're really meant to embrace and be open to. Uh, the sun and Jupiter made a conjunction on Monday, that was November 26th, an exact conjunction. And that happens once a year. Once a year, the biggest, the biggest planet, Jupiter, meets up with the brightest planet, or the sun, the solar energy, and they connect and they amplify, expand. But they're also downloading energies for us. That's how I feel it intuitively, is that there are some new things coming through. And then Mercury retrograde was going over this point as well, and that was bringing in these downloads into our mental energies. So the Sun and Jupiter expanding us, and then Mercury, the smallest planet, trying to get a grasp on these new areas of expansion. And this energy is ongoing. I, I know that when these conjunctions happen, we can think, oh, did I miss something? Was I supposed to do something? And I always think of it as it is a download and it is about consciousness. So it's being aware in your energy and in your natal chart where the download is happening and then where the openings are happening. And you didn't really miss anything because Mercury is going to come back to this point in our charts. Jupiter will come back here the four degrees of Sagittarius in December, specifically it is December 17th. And Jupiter comes back and brings in new information about this expansion. So you didn't miss anything, but we are meant to stay open this week and, and to say yes and to look at possibilities. Uh, maybe you even want to sit with something for a little bit with Mercury retrograde, but allow the new to arrive. And I got this image of dancing, and it's such a time of dancing energy right now, not only with the Sagittarian planets, but the Pisces energies too, Mars and Pisces, Neptune and Pisces, and Chiron and Pisces, uh, both Sagittarius and Pisces energies are about freedom release, movement, flexibility, and to have something in your world right now that allows you to physically move. And so dance is a great way to do that, whether that's just in the privacy of your own home or doing something fun with friends. It's like the, the movement of energy right now is really important. And we're meant to be opening up. And again, we can feel like some things were really on lockdown, um, this year, you know, you really had to work on some things and go deeper and, and take it seriously. Uh, we've had very big Saturn in Capricorn energies along with Pluto in Capricorn. And we've also had this never-ending 
Scorpio energy, which I'm going to touch on in today's show. We're not done with Scorpio. So it's sort of like you can't even get away, right, from that one thing that you thought you would move through and you thought you would get through and it wouldn't be this long, dragging on story, right? And there is something for all of us that we're working through, this continual thing um, in our Scorpio areas of our charts that is requiring the ongoing energy management, the ongoing working it through and, and transforming those fears into something higher. Well, all of that can be really draining on us. And so now with this freedom energy, do something that frees you, that lightens you. Do something that reminds you that there's more to the story than simply the ongoing deep dive work. And to gift yourself with that right now in whatever form that looks like for you. But again, I was feeling how the spine, I was feeling the spine as being really tense. And our spines are related to Saturn and Capricorn, the structures of our body, standing up straight, having a backbone, um, being strong in self. The Capricorn energies relate to your, your spine, your bones, your teeth. What makes us in the form and the structure of a human is related to Saturn and, and Capricorn. And so we had to be really pulled together and aware as Saturn and Capricorn has moved back and forth through the first deacon of Capricorn this year. So Saturn went into Capricorn uh, last December, December 20th, 21st, and then it went retrograde earlier this year. And it has stayed in these first, the first deacon of, of Saturn. Uh, the deacon is, uh, there are three deacons in a chart, I mean, sorry, in each sign. And it went to nine degrees of Capricorn and then retrograded back. And now Saturn and Capricorn is covering that territory again and will enter 10 degrees of Capricorn December 20th and 21st. So we've literally had a full year of the first nine degrees of Capricorn. And when that happens, we have to pull it together because that's what the Saturn Capricorn energy requires of us. Okay, pull it together, stand up straight, no goofing off, get serious, get real about some things, check in. And it's and it's like physically I felt it in our spines. It's like we had to just really be aware of how we were presenting ourselves, using our energy, what matters, where where we're really committing. It's like there's a, there's a seriousness, right? And that's a good thing. But what I have felt lately is that part of the new energies right now are reminding you to twist your spine, right? Like open up the spine, be flexible, do those gentle, soft stretches um, like in yoga and even just laying on your back where you twist your hips um, to one side and you leave your shoulders on the floor. Um, Anything that opens up where we've been holding on and holding ourselves upright to remember we're strongest when we're flexible and when we allow ourselves to not be too rigid. And that's what this energy is about too, is to look at where perhaps you've been sitting for too long, Uh, sitting at the desk, sitting in the car, sitting in the subway. I mean, think of all the ways, you know, we sit in front of the couch, on the couch, in front of the TV, in front of the computer, too much sitting, Um, That's just part of life these days, it seems, but that's not what our bodies are meant to do. And in fact, we're meant to be very aware of how we can hold on to too much with that tightness. So right now, do anything that allows you to be flexible and open, gentle stretches, soft things that really allow your spine to release. And I've just, I was feeling that the past few days intuitively, and I just kept feeling myself stretching. Um, and even our shoulders, they can just be tense and we don't realize it. Anything where you can be soft and gentle with your body. This is also part of Mars in Pisces, where we allow ourselves that 
softening and that loosening. And we just exhale and we come back to ourselves in a way that allows us to listen to what our bodies have been supporting that we've taken for granted. And and that's part of right now too. So again, the Sagittarius and Pisces energies are about the freedom, the movement, dancing, release, stretching, anything that kind of makes sure you're not too, you know, rigid and stiff. So just try that in terms of a daily practice or whatever that feels right because that's going to help you stay open to these new energy downloads that we're experiencing. Um, In today's show, I'm going to share with you another story time about Venus. Now, last week, I offered you a story time about Mercury and Mercury's retrograde journey and how Mercury is moving backwards in Sagittarius, and he has to go back into that Scorpio cave to get new parts of the story that he missed the first time around. And if you want to listen to that story time, that would be the show on Wednesday, November 21st. Uh, You can go back and listen to that podcast at your convenience for that full breakdown. And today we're going to talk about Venus because Venus has a really amazing journey in back into Scorpio. And I'm really excited to share this story with you, which I'm going to get to here in just a few minutes because this is going to help you really claim power. Like it just feels really powerful and strong and and it just feels really good. So I hope that this helps you gain a new perspective on this never-ending Scorpio season that we've been moving through and to help you identify what you're here to see differently as Venus moves into Scorpio again. So we will get to that in just a moment. Uh, Thank you to all of you um, who joined me and listened to the show on Monday where I talked about some of the astrological healing themes around depression and anxiety, Um, just what to be aware of and to know about your own natal chart. Mental health topics are really important right now. You've probably seen it at least in uh, pop culture that more people are even coming forward with some of their stories, some of their experiences. It's actually being normalized in a way that it hasn't been before. And what I wanted to also say is that on that show on YouTube, in the comments, please feel free to share your best resources or experts who have helped you through any kind of depression or anxiety or any type of mental health thing. Please um, offer that. We need to help each other. Help each other with anything that's been beneficial for you. On this topic, I felt I could have said a lot more um, because it's such a big and important thing these days. It's part of our Neptune and Pisces and Chiron and Pisces energies of what we're healing emotionally, spiritually, and energetically and how collectively we're all moving through these energies right now and we're feeling it um, in many ways that we can't logically understand, but it's there. Um, So the the energetics around it are important. Um, It's important to know if you're an empath, for example. And it's also important to know if you are a highly sensitive person. Now, this is um, a topic that's been around for a long time. And the expert on being a highly sensitive person, her name is Elaine Aaron, and she wrote a book. And I believe um, it's like 30 years old. It, this book, The Highly Sensitive Person, came out a few decades ago. And depending on your age, you're aware of it um, or, or it's new to you. But I really recommend this because it could explain how you maybe feel that there's too much stimuli around you and that it can help you understand if you're having deeper fears around feeling safe in the world or if the world feels dangerous to you and that is a source of anxiety. Um, Elaine Aaron is a psychologist um, and this is a really good book. It was, okay, so 1996 is when the book was published. There are now um, workbooks for it. There's The Highly Sensitive Child um, and there's many more uh, um, books on this topic. So please check that out, The Highly Sensitive Person. And it's just great to validate how you experience or feel the world. 
So another resource to share with you there. And uh, one more thing to share with you is that I'm very grateful for all of you and for how you have connected with me on my new YouTube channel. I have uploaded for you the two last lunations of 2018, December 7th, new moon in Sagittarius at 15 degrees, which I'll be talking about more in December, and then the December 22nd uh, Cancer full moon, which is a really big new uh, full moon, and I share with you four reasons why this Cancer full moon is important and different. So those are on YouTube, and then also on YouTube, there's a playlist about the significant transits in your lifetime. And be sure to check that out because it's going to help you understand the road you're on, the transits in your chart, the big transits that everybody goes through, and perhaps what's ahead. This is also good for your children. For example, everyone has their first Saturn square around seven years of age where natal Saturn is squared by transiting Saturn, so some type of maturing energy. And then between the ages of 12 and 14, um, there's three big transits that we all have, the Jupiter return, the Chiron square, and the Saturn opposition, and so on. So if you are looking to put more of an understanding around these bigger energies in your chart, I created these videos for you um, you can do that, and I think it's important to know what happens in each decade of life. Okay, so um, I just want to give you a lot to help you understand how amazing astrology is for all of us and that it benefits us in ways that um, when we connect the dots, it's just awesome. So today, Sun and Sag, Jupiter and Sag, Mercury and Sag, maybe that's why I feel like I'm talking so fast, <laughs> because everything gets uh, accelerated here with the fire signs and the fire energy. Uh, now, please note how Mars in Pisces is going to be squaring the sun coming up here, and that could feel like a frustration. And that will be exact on December 1st and 2nd, and possibly the 3rd. So you could feel that something gets slowed down. You don't know which road to choose. You're, you have many options. Um, there can be a lack of clarity because these are the mutable signs. And you might need just a little bit more time to think things over, to think things through. So just to be aware, Sun and Mars squaring at 9 and 10 degrees is coming up. Uh, this weekend, on, you might even feel it on Monday as well. So it is a good time to be slower and to contemplate your next steps. Also pay attention if you feel triggered, if you have any anger, frustration that comes up. Uh, one thing to always do at a higher level with anything that you're triggered with is to sit with yourself and ask, what am I feeling and to be very honest with yourself about your feelings, that's very powerful to know the feelings. And then to look at if this is something that's been triggered for you previously uh, or recently even, and look at your reaction and your feelings and, and to own it and to accept it as just part of the human experience. That's a part of consciousness. Um, otherwise, that's where we start to, you know, throw the energy around, um, blame others. That's what uh, Mars and Pisces can do. It can feel like the victim. It can blame. It can um, go into self-pity. So just being aware of, okay, I meant to learn from this. What is this showing me? What am I supposed to sit with? And also it's something to help with your spiritual development and soul growth because that's what the Pisces energy does for us in its highest form. It shows us something um, that we didn't know was there. And we can feel into it and we can also use spiritual gifts to work with it and, and to understand how to move that energy consciously. So I, I say that because not everybody knows how to work consciously with their triggers. And it really helps you to maintain that part of your energy, to maintain 
uh, the choices that you have, and to honor yourself as you do so. Uh, the past week we had Neptune stationing direct, and whenever that happens, Neptune is, is slowing down, and that actually happened uh, November 24th, 25th at 13 degrees 42 minutes. And so now Neptune is officially moving direct again and is going to stay at 13 degrees of Pisces until about the end of December. So it's still in the same place, and it's going to move forward. And because Neptune moves so slow, um, it takes a while, you know, to, to move degrees. But it's never going to be in this place again in your chart. So if you have anything at 13 degrees of the water signs or the mutable signs, the Neptune energy has been working with you intensely, and you're probably really happy to see it go away um, so that you can have some clarity again, so that you can get out of the fog. Uh, but it's slow moving, and so by the end of the year, Neptune will be at 14 degrees. But I just wanted to let you know that it is still moving slow and it can be very fuzzy. And we lack, we lack clarity with these Neptune and Pisces energies. But ultimately, they're showing you something higher. And they're asking you to go into your intuition. That that is the compass. That is the guide. It's not your mind. It's not anything in your human faculties. It's your intuition, it's your spiritual self, it's uh, your, your angels, your, your guides, anything outside of us in other realms are where we go to really get what we need with this strong Neptune and Pisces energy. So just a heads up about that so that you can um, know what's happening and understand that it's one of these bigger energy cycles that we all feel. We all feel them, and you could be feeling it more personally if anything is working with you um, at that 13 degrees of Pisces point. So let's get to our story time here. And I call it that because I create these stories for you that I think are a fun way to describe the energies and gives you the personas to work with and a way to put the information together. And we've been talking a lot about Scorpio, right, over the past year because we had Jupiter and Scorpio, for over a year. Then we had Mars in Scorpio earlier this year. Then the Sun in Scorpio. Uh, we had Mercury in Scorpio, who's now going retrograde back into Scorpio. And then Venus began her retrograde in Scorpio. So it's been the never-ending Scorpio journey, which is showing us what we're really deeply, powerfully, and emotionally transforming it's not easy Scorpio is not easy it, it's meant to take you into places that you wouldn't normally go you're thinking well I wouldn't choose this uh, but at some higher level you did because you could handle it and you were ready and it was time so it is about the ownership around the Scorpio energies because that is associated with your power and that's ultimately what the Scorpio journey is about. It's about elevating into higher versions of your power, your, your sense of possibilities, your sense of I can do this and not be afraid, or I can be afraid and I can still do it, right? The fear isn't as big and the fear doesn't hold you back. So wherever the Scorpio energy is in your natal chart, is where you've really been working through big, big things. And it's been never-ending. And it will end uh, in January. Specifically, January 7th, 8th, is when Venus will leave Scorpio and move in to Sagittarius. So she is the last personal planet to move through this sign. And it's a bit like coming through to heal up, give some love, give some recognition, 
and, and just give a new sense of yourself and a new sense of how you are loved because the Scorpio energy pulls us the furthest away from that. It pulls you into the deepest, darkest fears. And it can feel like there's no love here. <laughs> there's no light here. But that's part of the illusion and that's part of why the journey is so important. Is because we have to experience all of our energy to know all of our power. You experience all of your energy to then consciously know all of your power. So uh, back in September, September 10th, Venus entered Scorpio for the first time and went to 10 degrees of Scorpio on October 6th, where she stationed retrograde, and then went back into Libra the beginning of November. So September 10th through October 31st was an introduction to this Venus energy. And so Venus started the journey and went into that Scorpio cave and was not quite prepared for how intense it would be or what the fears were, what the triggers were, what came up along the way. Um, she was fighting with Mars. Mars was in Aquarius at the time, and he couldn't be bothered and didn't want to understand what she was feeling or what, what was going on, so they weren't getting along very well. And so this Venus energy went into its Scorpio sting. And there are the three different archetypes associated with Scorpio. The scorpion, which rules 0 through 9 degrees. And then from 10 to 19 degrees, we have the phoenix rising, where the consciousness says, I don't want to stay in that stinging energy. I don't want to be in that fear and in that place of reaction and emotional um, fears. I want to transform it. So the middle deacon between 10 to 19 degrees of Scorpio is the transformation. And then from 20 to 29 degrees of Scorpio is the eagle and understanding the higher wisdom, emotional truth, personal power, and, and what things mean on your own terms. And so Venus only got through the first deacon and she was in that Scorpio reactive, um, emotional intensity, um, bitchy, mean, like she wasn't happy because she didn't even know what was coming up. She was just feeling a lot. Scorpio is also the energies that we take on from other people unconsciously. Scorpio is where we share, where we merge, where we come together with other people. And oftentimes at an unconscious level, we take on their stuff and we are participants in a power dynamic that we're not aware of. And it typically plays out that it's the other person who has the power and you didn't know about it. And so this is where there can be uh, the realization of abuse, of manipulation, of lies, of betrayal, because you didn't understand the full picture. You didn't understand what was going on. So Venus went into these first 10 degrees and then backtracked out and went into Libra. She's been in Libra all of November. And she went back to 25 degrees of Libra, November 16th, where stationed direct. And now it's November 28th, and she's at 27 degrees of Libra. So where I visualize this story picking up is that she's sitting out in a outside in a at a bench and she's talking with someone a, another woman about what's come up for her when she first went into that Scorpio energy the fears the under the the story she didn't realize um, the power dynamics the parts of herself that she didn't understand were there and she goes back into Libra and she sits down and she talks about it she talks about these fears she talks about it with a level head she gets somebody else's perspective in Libra. 
she shares, and she's able to detach emotionally to say, I didn't know this, and I didn't realize this was what was coming up, but now that I can see it, I can understand from a more you know, balanced perspective that on one side I had this experience, but that isn't what's true for me, and I really have to make some clear decisions about the relationships, that's Venus, that are true for me. And Venus is how we want to relate to people. And looking at the healthy uh, ways we do that and, and to look at, well, were there power dynamics in this relationship that I didn't see until now? Were there parts of this relationship that weren't really healthy for who I am now? And what about being loved? And am I received for who I am? And am I receiving for everything that I give? So the Libra and Scorpio energies are showing us the healthier ways that we share. And then it also shows us the unhealthy ways and the relationships that hurt or don't feel good or they're out of balance or they just plain suck. And you're like, this relationship sucks. What am I doing? Um, whether that is like with a friend, a family member, a sibling, a coworker. I mean, we have so many relationships in our lives. And so what this Venus and Libra energy is doing is she's sitting at this picnic table and she's talking to a woman who is about her same age. And this woman has on her forehead three dots. And they look like they're from, they're, they're three gray dots, okay? And they're on her forehead. And Venus doesn't question it, and, and she just accepts it, and she's polite. Venus in Libra is very polite. It's not going to put you on the spot, Not doesn't want you to feel uncomfortable, but she's curious. Like, why does this woman have these three dots on her forehead? I don't know, but I just like talking to her, and she gives me sound advice and good feedback, and she's really listening, and I really enjoy being with her. And so Venus can see the clock is ticking, and she's like, you know, I have to get going um, because I've got to, I've got to move through this. Like, I want to move through these fears. I want to move through where I have felt powerless, and I want to step into some parts of myself that I thought I couldn't handle. Scorpio is where we felt really deep fears that we weren't good enough. Scorpio is where we can unconsciously be comparing ourselves to other people. Uh, both Venus and Scorpio energies are actually associated with money. So how about this? Have you ever felt afraid of being too abundant or being too rich or having too much money? And on one hand, that could sound ridiculous. But on the other hand, it's related to your self-worth. And that's Venus. And she's like, well, I don't know if I deserve to be rich or to have everything I need because I see other people, Scorpio, I see other people and what they're doing and what they're making and you can be unconsciously triggered, um, you can become jealous, uh, competitive, um, you can have envy, also lower Scorpio energies. And so Venus could have felt like I'm just really envious that so-and-so has this and I don't. Or I thought that only certain people could have a certain type of power or only certain people could make a certain amount of money. Like the, It's the limitations that have been unconscious. And so Venus knows, no, I want to I face this because Jupiter went through Scorpio and, and really made things bigger for me in a way that I can't ignore it. I can't ignore it. And then the sun came through and gave me a sense of it's possible. And now Mercury is, is really giving me more information about the story. So Venus is getting up to leave this picnic table. She's very grateful to this woman that she sat down with. And she gives her a hug and says, thank you so much. But I have to get going because I really want to tackle this. And Venus has this rising power now. And it's a power within her. And so she starts to walk forward into the Scorpio energy. But before she gets there, she has these jolts of energy. Because as she approaches 28 and 29 degrees of Libra, those closing degrees of Libra, 
she receives the square from the nodal axis, 28 degrees of Cancer and 28 degrees of Capricorn, and then she receives a jolt from Uranus at 29 degrees of Aries. So she thinks she's going into Scorpio right away, and then she gets lit up with this cardinal energy and (laughs) I see Uranus and Aries having like a mohawk and red hair and he's like don't do what they say don't do what anyone says do your thing you be you don't worry about them like he's kind of like fired up right and he's telling her no matter what you experience going forward don't forget who you are Don't forget how far you've come and don't sacrifice yourself for any relationship. Because Uranus and Aries is about our inner rebel, our inner independence, and how you're here to lead yourself. And so this is the energy of you do you and don't worry about everybody else. And so that startles her. She's like, oh my goodness, who's this crazy maniac? Um, But she gets the message. And it's very startling, but it's important because the relationships that we create are built on the relationship we have within ourselves. It's within your own feminine, your own masculine, your own sense of giving and receiving. You know, that's the mirror. Is That's what people show you because that's how they can connect to you. And that's what has been rewired. And so this Uranus energy is giving her an electrical shock. Okay, I won't be too nice. (laughs) I'll I'll remember who I am. And then these squares from the nodes are actually quite beautiful because I feel like this north node in Cancer, you know, that's the the area of growth and stepping into the energy of, of Cancer, the maternal instinct, the trusting yourself, listening to your heart, listening to your feelings as something you can always depend on. And then the south node at 28 degrees of Capricorn is saying, it's time to let go of of what you, the role you thought you had to play. And it's okay to be afraid of that because you're going to gather even more as you go forward. So Venus gets this jolt as she closes out her time in Libra. And again, those are going to be um, energies that come up November 30th and December 1st and 2nd. And then Venus officially enters Scorpio again, December 3rd, Monday, December 3rd. And so she goes into Scorpio again, and yet this time she's different. She's prepared. She understood that back in September and October, she wasn't quite prepared for the depths of what came up and the fears, the worries, um, the parts of herself that felt powerless, that were reactive and were really unconscious. Scorpio is definitely a journey through your emotional consciousness, And so now she's got a little bit more of a handle on it. And she's aware that, okay, as I step into this energy and I move forward, I can handle this. I'm okay. I'm okay to do it my way and to not look at what everyone else is doing and to not look at what anybody else thinks, to not take on their feelings. Because Venus in Scorpio can feel a lot, but it's not all hers. So she's entering into Scorpio remembering that she's only responsible for her own emotional experience. You're not responsible for anybody else's. You have no power over there. It's only within you. And that's what she is feeling strongly now. She's like, well, I've learned not to give my energy away to other people or other relationships that just deplete me, that just don't feel that they're strong enough, um, or that they're not even recognizing who I am. Venus moves through Scorpio, and she begins to feel this rising power 
in herself, especially through the first nine degrees. And it's where she's aware of the scorpion sting or where who she used to be. Uh, for example, I used to feel jealous when someone else had this, or I used to be envious around this, or I used to feel this big emotional wave um, come up when someone else did this. And now I bring the energy into myself and I manage it. I manage it within me because I love myself enough to manage me. So she claims back what she first perceived as her responsibility or something that affected her. And now she's saying with greater internal emotional clarity, I don't have to concern myself with the going there or going into that. So there's kind of this sense of a containment here and a wisdom that I feel is really potent- is, is really strong because Venus now moves through this Scorpio cave that first felt really dark, really dark. And that's where the fears rise up. And you know how the fears become bigger when we're alone with them? And they, they, they turn into the monster shadows on the walls, right? And they become bigger than what we thought. Well, this time she can recognize it. She's like, okay, I have a fear that's coming up. And for you, this is wherever the Scorpio energy is in your chart. Whatever house the Scorpio energy starts in, this is where the energy comes up. It's like, okay, this is the fear, but I'm going to work with this. I'm in charge of this fear. It's not in charge of me. And so Venus moves forward, and she moves forward, and she keeps going through the first nine degrees of Scorpio. And she realizes that the fear has shrunk because she sees what it is. And she understands that it's not even something as bad as she thought. And she keeps her energy within herself. So other people don't affect her as much in the same ways that they used to because her power is within herself even more. So she gets to nine degrees, a Scorpio. And waiting for her, at nine degrees of Scorpio is Saturn at nine degrees of Capricorn. And in this story, I see Saturn at nine degrees of Capricorn as a Gandalf, right? Elder, wise, mentor, clear, doesn't say much. And he looks at her and she looks at him And he says, I'm really proud of you. In that loving, mentor, fatherly way. And he recognizes her. He recognizes what Venus in in Scorpio has been dealing with in her inner world. And this is where something shifts in her because she now recognizes herself too. And that energy of Saturn and Capricorn gives her strength in her spine, gives her strength in her purpose, gives her strength in what she's doing. And she receives it and she says, thank you, I appreciate it. And he's like, you're doing great. I'm supporting you. We're doing this together. You're doing this for the long term because Capricorn is about what we're doing going forward uh, over the years ahead. And so she gets this strength. And she keeps going. And next up, when she gets to 13 degrees of Scorpio on December 21st, she receives this beautiful trine from Neptune and Pisces. So think about walking through a cave and on the side of the cave, all of a sudden there's this lagoon an unexpected lagoon and neptune and pisces is the mermaid in the lagoon and is basically saying give me 
everything you don't want. Just give me it all. Give me your fears. Give me your doubts. Give me your worries. And Venus basically tosses all that to this mermaid. And then the Neptune and Pisces energy sends her back all this new intuition, spiritual work, development, higher perspective. See, this is what you've been learning. And, oh, yes, here's all this compassion. Here's all the self-forgiveness for how you've held yourself back, for how you didn't understand you could walk in your power. And so this awesome mermaid then gives her this sense of, I'm doing this beautifully. And it's this new download of unconditional love that she receives from Neptune and Pisces. And then Venus voyages on. And at times this cave is still very lonely, but she knows she's not alone. And she can feel it. And she can feel her su- that she has support now that she didn't recognize or feel before. And so she goes forward and she moves to 20 degrees of Scorpio on December 29th, and at 20 degrees, she now has made a sextile to Pluto at 20 degrees of Capricorn. Pluto doesn't say much, just kind of stands there, maybe a little creepy, but he's a nice guy in the story. (laughs) He's a nice guy. Uh, Pluto and Capricorn is silent against the wall, eyeing her, observing you know, just watching. And he gives her a bag of gold coins. And the gold coins represent where she is here to manifest and to experience abundance. And this Pluto energy is about power and the sense of power you have when you really step into your own authority. And so at 20 degrees, there is this energy of, You've got this, and you know it, and you're different now, and you've been through now the second deacon of Scorpio where the transformation has happened even more, and you're allowing yourself to own it and to own that, yes, I used to have a fear, but I don't feel this fear anymore. I don't feel it like I used to. And this is the Venus energy of I love myself in a way that I didn't realize was possible. And then Pluto looks at her, and all he says is, you have two dots on your forehead. She's like, two dots? What do you mean two dots on my forehead? Because she can't feel them. But she has to keep going. So she does. And she ventures forward, and she keeps moving along her journey. And about a week later, January 5th, she's at 27 degrees of Scorpio, And then at 28 degrees of Scorpio, and she makes another trine to Pisces planets, and this time it's Chiron in Pisces, at 28 degrees, okay? So just at the end of the journey, at the end of this this deep resurrection, like transformation, metamorphosis of Scorpio, she's at 28 degrees, and she can see the light, at the end of the tunnel, and before she gets there, Chiron and Pisces is, is there floating, remember, for Mercury story time, um, Chiron in Pisces just floats, and he's in his own pose, and he shows her everything she's been healing and everything that has made her even more of this beautiful, amazing vessel of love that she didn't realize. And she feels this download through this trine in a way that just, it's like, I don't even know the words for it, because I feel it as something that's so huge. It just lights up her aura. It just lights up everything she's been through, because she's like, I'm different now. I'm different. I'm new. I'm more powerful. I don't have that fear. I don't have that worry. I understand how I can move through something. And even when I have a fear, I can still go into it and get out on the other side and see more light and just feel lighter. 
And then Chiron gives her the third dot on her forehead. Now, I didn't say this, but Saturn gave her the first dot because Saturn was the end of the first deacon. Pluto gave her the second dot, it was the end of the second deacon. Chiron gives her the third dot, the end of the third deacon of Scorpio. So she leaves Scorpio, and she has these three dots on her forehead. And her voyage is over January 8th, where she enters Sagittarius, and she's back in the light, and there's like this party going on, and she's just amazed at how light she feels, how it's like rejuvenated. It's just different. It's a sense of anything is possible now because of everything I've been through and all the support I got along the way. I knew I could do it on my own, but then I had all these planets making sure that I was supported and that I, I, I was getting stronger in a whole new way. It's like a whole new way for your soul. So then she goes to the party and realizes that she's different. She's transformed. She's not afraid of what she was afraid of before. Um, she shifted her awareness about other people, around money, around relationships that matter to her, around what's worth her time. And she has this new belief in herself, and that is the Sagittarius energy, a new belief in what matters to you and how you see the world and how you see yourself in it. So she goes to this party, and she sits down at a picnic table with another woman who's sitting there contemplating herself. And what this is, is now the wise, transformed, powerful Venus with those three dots on her forehead is actually the same person who sat down before Venus started her journey. Meaning, it's your own energy working with you, guiding you forward. Your transformed Venus, whoever she is to you, is the one who sits down with you at that picnic table, who listens to you, who understands your fears, and who says, you're going to get through this. It's your own energy of self-love that is helping you through this. And it's that bigger soul love that's beyond just the human experience of love, right? It's that bigger sense of what love is, unconditional true love. And then Venus understands at the beginning of this journey, back in November, when I was sitting there talking this out, talking about my fears, that person who showed up to listen to me, to understand who got it, was simply that transformed version of myself guiding me forward. The end. <laughs> the end. That's the end of story time for this week, my friends. Um, we went a little bit over, but thank you for joining me. I hope that this story resonates and that you get something from it around the Scorpio areas of your chart, which are constantly where you're facing fears but stepping into new power. So know that that's what Venus is helping us all with, collectively and individually. I'll be back on Monday with another healing theme for you and then of course i'll be back on wednesday for the next podcast where we'll talk about the energies of right now and the week ahead thank you so much for joining me wishing you a beautiful journey ahead as we leave behind november and move into december the final month of 2018 and i will see you in december so take good care and i'll talk to you later bye-bye